Miss Fire, the cat, able to go off. Are those flintlocks or cats? Yeah, that's a flintlock. Yeah.
Well, good morning and thank you all for coming out to the Alamo this morning. We are the Living History staff here at the Alamo. My name is Mr. Hicks. I'm also joined me. We have Ms. Diller, Mr. Scott, and Mr. Jones. And this morning for you all, um, we're going to briefly talk about, of course, demonstrate for you all the military firearm that you would see here. Battle of the Alamo in 1836, which would be that smoothbore flintlock musket. Now, in the United States, we have arsenals that will be supplying these to the military, um, such as the militia, of course. The first one would be out of Springfield, Massachusetts. The Model 1795, which Mr. Scott has, is modeled after a French musket called a Charlotte. Now, another arsenal would open up in Harpers Ferry, Virginia. Mr. Scott has the Model 1816, um, also built in Springfield Armory as well. That is the first US patterned military musket. So it's about an inch shorter than the Model 1795. Now, the American-made muskets are all 69 caliber. The more dominant musket that you would see here is a British musket called a Brown Bess. So this musket would be used by the entire Mexican army and more than half the defenders inside the walls of the Alamo here. That British musket is 75 caliber instead of 69, so they'll fire a slightly larger lead ball but all the military muskets at the time are smoothbore, which means there's no rifling inside the barrel. Rifling is a series of cut lands and grooves inside a long rifle barrel. So when you fire a lead round ball out of a long rifle, because of the grooves, that ball will spin. So you will hit what you are aiming at. So the effective range for a long rifle is anything past 250 yards. So 300 yards will hit your target, and 400 yards will hit your target. The downside, though, it takes a full minute to load and fire for one shot with a long rifle. The long rifle, of course, is your hunting weapon. So taking a minute to load on the field with a hunting weapon is way too long. The musket, since they don't have any of that rifling inside the barrel, the ball simply bounces around. Now, these can go up past 150 yards. You just don't know where that lead ball will end up. So it's effective where that ball will go straight to is about 75 yards, but beyond that it will go where it wants to go. So that's why in the military we stand all together, shoulder to shoulder in line formation, and we fire all together in volleys because of the inaccuracy of the weapon. What they cared about this time on the field was how fast you could load the musket. So a trained soldier should load and fire his musket every 20 seconds, so three shots per minute. Now we're gonna go through some drill that these men would learn uh, when they sign up with the local militia. So right now we have them at what's called ordered arms. We'll have them go to shoulder arms. So these men would march 10 miles, sometimes even 12 miles, with that musket in that left shoulder position. Of course, these muskets are heavy. So on the march, there's different ways you can carry it. One way would be to support arms. So in this manner, the lock mechanism is now nestled in the crease of the elbow, making it quite comfortable. Some men running onto the field can simply grab the small of the stock and do so. Shoulder, arms. Secure, arms. Now when it's raining out, you have to protect that lock mechanism so they have it tucked underneath the arm now. And of course the barrel is pointed downward to keep any rainwater from entering inside the barrel. On the march, these muskets will be loaded. And of course if black powder would get wet, these muskets will not function properly. Shoulder, arms. Now the other advantage to the military firearm is the bayonet, it's affixed at the end. So in times of hand-to-hand -hand fighting, these men will go to arms port, charge, bayonet. Ah! Shoulder, arms, unfix, bayonet. So right now we're gonna go through the loading method for these firearms. It's a 12-step process. This is the practice way we learn to load the muskets. So squad, prepare to load in 12 times. Load, open, pan, handle, cartridge. Now inside their cartridge box, we 25 paper cartridges. It's nothing more than basically a round cylindrical tube that has gunpowder at the bottom, and of course, well, gunpowder at the bottom, and lead ball as well. Now they're crimped over, so to get inside, they'll tear a cartridge, and they will prime. And they're gonna put some black powder in the pan, Shut pan, cast about, charge cartridge. So the remaining gunpowder is poured down the barrel, the ball of paper is getting worn up and stuffed in. Now they have to pack that towards the breech or bottom of the barrel. So they will draw a rammer, and they will ram cartridge. Pack that nice and tight, return, rammer. 
shoulder, arm. And they will all go back to that same left shoulder position. So that whole process on the field should take these men 20 seconds or less. Now the commanding officer, he's waiting for his line of men to be all in that same left shoulder position, or that will tell him that his men are all loaded and ready to fire. So the next command's given will be ready, aim, fire. Big boom, and they do it all over again. Shoulder, arm. So we'll do that same 12 step with an actual cartridge and load and fire two rounds at speed. The muskets are allowed, so if you have sensitive hearing little ones, please cover the ears. the cannon. <laughs> 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 well, you gotta start 